What's up, witches? Whether you're new here or a returner, welcome to my channel. This was a day where I had the energy either to dry my hair or shoot a video. So guess which one I picked? I always will pick to play with my favorite, favorite toys, especially when they're new toys. And if you are a patron, you get to see this video first. Before I go on, um, I want to point out that there is an Amazon wish list below. And if you would like to purchase a deck for me off of that wish list, when I unbox the deck and do the test drive, the reading will be for you personally. So, hey, what a deal. Today I am unboxing The Citadel, a fantasy oracle by Fez Inkright. And I know that name, but I don't know why. Uh, this is a Liminal 11 deck. So look at the beautiful packaging. Look at the, the copper gilding against the mat. It's really gorgeous. And of course, since it is a Liminal 11 deck, we've got this fabulous thing on the bottom here. But before we get to that, let's read the back. The Citadel is an archetype oracle deck that is steeped in the magic of fantasy literature and tabletop gaming. Each reading with the Citadel will take you on a new journey through the gleaming city experiencing new places, new people, and most importantly, new lessons to learn. Are you ready to take the next step on your journey? Pick up your bags, open the gates, and step inside. 60 card foiled oracle deck versus foiled again with guidebook uh, plus bonus guide for use with tabletop games. Oh my God, you guys. <clears throat> I think my kids are going to go nuts over this. Liminal 11, it says Light at the Crossroads. This is a new release, by the way, $29.99 in the U.S. And, and this is like one of the best things about Liminal 11 decks. Uh, Fab Faber, Faber Est Sue Quisqua Fortune. Okay, oh, sorry, you gotta look it up, you know that. Okay, Faber uh, Est. Okay, first thing I find out is it's supposed to be quisque, not quisqua. It means every man is the artisan of his own fortune. Okay. They maybe tell us that in the book, but I don't know that yet. So here we go. I just want to play with the snappy box. Let's play with it one more time. <laughs> ASMR, all the snappy boxes. And then, of course, on the inside here, we've got the thumb, thumb holds. And there's stuff inside. Look like an eyeball. Swirlies. Okay. I shall play no more. And then we have the, <clears throat> the kind of weird thing. Um, sometimes they have a piece of cardboard that goes over and down the side. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Oh, oh. Okay. So we have these funky little cardboard things that are just packaging. And yes, there's one in there. Okay, those will be done away with because we don't need those. I, You know, I appreciate it um, that they keep the deck from rattling around inside. It would be nicer if they would make the box the size of the deck, but they don't. So it's going to rattle around because I'm not keeping those things. Take the band off. And let's um, take a look at the book. The instruction booklet, The Citadel. And here's a little map. <laughs> I'm ducking underneath to look at the screen. So we've got like a, a circular city with several layers. Remind you of anything? Quick reading guide. Forward, a word from the author. Your journey through the Citadel. How the Citadel works. Card meanings, the court, the academy, the crowd, the troop. Gaming with the Citadel spreads and complementing the Tarot. So let's go here. So the quick reading guide has um, all of the cards listed. How interesting. With, um, with some keywords. 
but I don't, oh, 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 okay, so these are pages. I'm like, is are these the numbers of the cards? Because it starts with 22. No, so the quick reading guide is um, an index or a table of contents, sort of. The problem is that they're not in alphabetical order here, so how do you find the card that you're trying to look up? All right, I see on the deck that we've got a fire symbol here, and I see a fire symbol here. So that's going to narrow it down some. So you can go by the elemental symbol. That's air. That's earth. That's water. So right away we can see that the crown or the court is about is a fire um, suit, I guess. The air suit is the academy. The uh, earth suit is the crowd, and the water suit is the troop. Okay. Then we have forward. Um, I have been creating fantastic places in my head for as long as I can remember. Some of my fondest childhood memories are of roaming my grandmother's little garden, which seemed so big at the time, with a dustbin lit as a shield and a broken broom handle sword to stand against the imagined minions of evil sorcerers recovering mystical orbs that looked strangely like my grandfather's cricket ball. <clears throat> okay, so she's going on. They are going on. I don't really know he or she. Talking about Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, the world has changed a lot since then. Role-playing games have been welcomed with open arms, not just in big Hollywood media, but in schools, offices, la la la. Fortunate enough to be able to turn my passion for this hobby into a successful career with my live stream and podcast, High Rollers. Okay. As part of that journey, I've helped many D&D players and dungeon masters discover and learn about this game I adore so much. Fez Inkwright is one of those players. Okay, so the foreword is by Mark Holmes. So that's a, uh, a dude. Fez Inkwright is one of those players across our years of friendship. We have spoken at length in restaurants, convention halls, and compact living rooms about our love of fantasy and storytelling. The Citadel is a vibrant journey through a place of meaning and fate. Each card is beautifully and richly illustrated with alluring artwork that draws you into the world Fez has built and the deck's overall design combines the explorative and narrative elements of both tarot and role-playing games in a marvelous way. Okay, the Citadel is a fantastic love letter to the genre and a wonderful tool for anyone who dreams of telling fantasy stories in any format. All right, Dungeon Master for High Rollers D&D. And a word from the author. Thank you for picking up a copy of The Citadel. It's a tribute to fantasy literature and tabletop gaming. So uh, talking about their process. This deck is a tribute to every writer and every game that sculpted me, to Brian Jock, who started it all. So we've got the dedications to Garth Nix, J.R. Tolkien. Yay. To everyone who picks up this deck, may you never run out of good books and may the dice ever roll in your favor and uh that's yes that your journey through the citadel so it describes between two white chalk cliffs lies a turquoise bay and at the edge of that bay stands a city white stone walls gleam in the sun and red banners snap and wave in the ocean breeze the sea curls lazily around the rocks of the bay warm and placid and the fields are alive with the sights and sounds of farms and orchards this is the citadel home of fates and responsibilities and fates and possibilities and host to remarkable people whose stories provide an insight into the nature of humanity itself. It's an archetypal oracle deck that is steeped in the magic of the infinite worlds of fantasy literature and tabletop gaming. Okay, if you're more familiar with reading the tarot than oracle decks, you'll find tips on how to use this deck alongside the tarot at the back of this book. Beyond cardomancy, the citadel can be used as a supplement for tabletop role games. And at the back of the book, they tell you how, how the Citadel works. In the Citadel, each card represents an archetypal character who resides in the city, such as the champion or the poet, with a short description of what this archetype encapsulates and what message they can impart to you. Similar to the character cards, think the kings, queens, knights, and pages of the Tarot, these cards describe people. They are designed to be interpreted broadly. They may not just refer to you or people in your life, but may also express as aspects of a situation and help you reflect on your position, what you need, and how you can proceed. Like the Tarot, the Citadel Oracle is segmented into suits. Each suit represents a stratum of the Citadel society. 
So <clears throat> we have the court, the academy, the crowd, um, and the final suit, which moves between all parts of the city. So we have the, the uh, court right in the center of the citadel. And then encircling the court is the academy, those who flourish in acts of study and ingenuity. And the largest circle is the crowd. And then the final suit, the troop, um, are visitors to the citadel and they move between all parts of the city. The citadel is greater than the sum of its parts. The city and you can only flourish by acknowledging and balancing the strengths and weaknesses represented by all of the suits. Now we have the card meanings. We start in with the court. All right, let's go to the back. In-game fortune telling, okay. So here we have build a location, gaming with the Citadel. This is the last one, and then we have gaming. Build a location, uh, the court, first draw, second draw, third draw. So we've got each of the suits named and then a draw from each one. Build an encounter. Card one is location to card two, NPC. Playing character, something that's not an RPC. Card three is outcome. Build a character. In-game fortune telling. You can add divination to the game itself. Then we have spreads. The court, the academy. So this is situation, obstacle, advice. Where am I now? What do I aspire to? Potential obstacles. So, the, okay, so there's a court spread, an academy spread, three card spreads, but they have um, different names for the categories, of course, the crowd and the troop. I sort of like that. Ooh, and now we have the citadel spread, which includes all of them. Then there's the sword and shield, the sword, the shield, complementing the tarot. Okay, uh, though the way the oracles and tarot are read are distinctly different, they can both be used together to provide further insights if an initial spread leaves you uncertain. When reading a tarot spread, you may find yourself with further questions, in which case drawing an oracle card alongside the spread can provide further clarification. Um, there are two examples designed for the citadel. You may want to use the gates. Make this one card draw before laying out your tarot spread, and it provides a background against which your events take place. The castle, this one card draw, is made at the end of a tarot reading and provides clarification on how to resolve any difficulties that have been raised in the reading. How interesting. Okay, here is the back. We have um, the citadel both upright and reversed, and we have the four elemental symbols, which is pretty cool because they're like a palindrome except upside down and right side up. So if you flip this card, these elemental symbols, come on now, this should be easy to do. There we go. If you flip this card, it's gonna look exactly the same. So um, I don't know if you read reversals. I didn't see anything explicit about it, but you know, we shall see. Okay, here's the first one, the aspirin. So we're in this suit of the court. The aspirin, ambition, diligence, and setbacks. I love the little, the little dots of gilding. You know, camera, you would think when I'm giving you stark black and white boundaries that you would be able to focus in. All right, we're done playing like that. So you can see that there's gilding actually on the cards. So they are black and white and copper. And that gives a little texture too. The cardstock, ooh, I am not looking forward to this. The cardstock is thick, you guys, look at that. Very thick, very heavy as most liminal 11 decks are and very difficult to shuffle. Okay, so here's the aspirant. Ambition, diligence, setbacks, and then we have the assassin. Interesting, the court, the assassin, ruthlessness and conviction. So right away we see that this deck is going there. <clears throat> and it's great because it's fantasy. Um, ruthlessness and conviction, the catalyst, radical changes taking control. What is that? 
Is that a, there's a B on it? Is that a crystal? There's a bottle with a cork. I'm not sure what I'm looking at. The diviner, divine timing and evaluation. I love the artwork. I love these sinuous, ribbony things here. You would think it would be really easy to just kind of draw squiggles that look good, but it's not. Having done henna art, <laughs> it's not. Okay. The fate, accepting help and guidance. Look at the, ooh. So uh, now I'm looking actually at the images and the diviner you see has a seed. But here's, so diviner. I look at diviner as being a reader, right? Divination. But this is divine timing and evaluation. Hmm, interesting. The fate, accepting help and guidance. So we have the fate, which, you know, you would think destiny, not accepting help. Interesting. The founder. Foundations and community. Now that one makes sense. The other ones, I'm finding a little bit of a disconnect between the title and the keywords. Hopefully that gets joined up in the book. Here's the air, unseen potential, hesitation. The hound, loyalty, chains, promises. Wow. Chewing up the blade. The king, control, reversal of fortune. Look at all these blades that are shattering. How interesting. The poet. Relationships, vulnerability, with a quill pen and the beautiful flowers. The queen. Determination, sacrifice. Her blade is not breaking. And we see the water symbol behind her. I appreciate that detail. And I mean, these there are tiny, tiny little flecks of gilding that you cannot see throughout the design. The sleeper, cause and effect, clarity. The sleeper, cause and effect. How does that, how? Ah, okay. We take it as written. The spy master, knowledge, distrust. So we have the crow. There's a ring on this finger. There's a key. The waker. Awareness, reflection. We got an eyeball. Same that's inside the box. The wise one. Tradition, order. And here we have the eye again. And this. And now we're into the next suit. So I want to see how many are in each. Um. Oops. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Yes, that makes 60 cards. Okay, the Acolyte. New Projects Learning. Interesting image. There's a vessel of some sort with a light shining out from it and a scroll. So, sobre et coagula, the alchemist, balance, invention, destruction. Let's see if they describe those words in the book. So if we're looking up the alchemist, um, there. And they are, oh, okay, I, I lied. They are in alphabetical order in each of the categories. So if you look up this, it, they're very easy to find. So. Well done. Okay, the alchemist. Sol solve et coagula. Something must be destroyed in order, to, in order to create a new. So dissolve, coagulate. Okay. Makes sense for alchemy. And the vessel. And look at all the shells and crystals and bones and feathers. And the archer. Bind, biding your time, planning ahead. I love the bow with the, like the shell sort of wings, sort of. Very creative. The astronomer, discovery and augury. The captain, 
taking command, teamwork. Look at like pipes here. It's this idea of something being built and the handshake. We're collaborating. We're agreeing. The cartographer, a crossroads exploration. So that's a map maker. The champion, achievement, downfall. So, I mean, that one right there makes it very clear that there could be reverse. Up, upright, achievement, reverse, downfall. Let's find out if that's the case. It is a big book. Photographer, the champion. Yes, so we get a, like a large enough um, image of the card in the book with the colors in it and then we get a couple paragraphs and then we get a reverse. So um, an opponent yields, the crowd roars, victory is a heady brute. So there's kind of a description and then um, yes, so there's reverse. <laughs> in short, um, the enchanter, deception and trickery. Ooh. The guide, inheritance, correction. The orator, communication, confidence. I knew him, Horatio. The patron, mentorship and finances. Look at those things going through the hands. Interesting. The priest, perseverance, faith. Gilding. Ah. Scholar, investigation, research. The sentinel, determination, certainty. Amor, fati, love and fate. Fati, I think would mean fate. We're gonna look. We're gonna look. Um, amor, fati, and they don't say. Oops. The warrior. Perfectionism, burnout. Wow. Um, the, okay, and now we're in Earth. So that was the air suit. This is the Earth suit. The botanist, parenthood, legacy. Perfect opening for the Earth suit. The forgotten, missed opportunities, fear of failure. Ooh. The gambler, loss and risks. So I am seeing like this really full range of stuff. Let's see cards. The hunter, sure footedness, predestination. Wow. Predestination, AKA fate. The merchant, self worth, trade. The miser, stubbornness, inflexibility. Ooh, look at that image. At the center with all of this stuff kind of swirling around him, but also really hemming him in. That's something. The muse, generosity, naivete. Musical instruments. I love a deck that includes music. The pathless, difficult decisions and lack of direction. The images are very strong, and even though sometimes I don't really get the connection between the keywords, stop, stop, oh my god, I hope it hasn't been doing that the whole time, between the keywords and the images, um, the images are so strong that there's an awful lot to key into. The pilgrim, opportunities, growth. Sailor, new influences and wanderlust. Look at the curving. There's, you know, some of them are really static. Some of them are really dynamic. But there's, there is a flow and a dynamic quality to the lines, to the artwork. The shepherd, celebration, family. Like shepherd, what do you think of celebration? No. Family, I get. So, you know, shepherd, something that keeps the flock together. It's very interesting. 
the Smith overthinking, taking action, overthinking, beating something to death, <laughs> or beating it into shape, taking action. The thief seizing the moment, selfishness. Look at all these little discs. Are those coins? Are they AOL CDs that you get in your mailbox in the 90s every single damn day? <laughs> the vengeance, overcoming slights, a choice. Look at the anchor. Vengeance, anchor. I can't wait to see how these are described. And the walker, the unknown, a journey. We've had a couple others that were kind of journey oriented, like the pilgrim, um, and I can't think of another one. The adventurer, there's another one. Responsibility, expectations. So what's the difference between, oh, and by the way, the adventurer starts off the last suit of the troop. The water suit. I haven't been calling them by their real names. The adventurer. So here we have the walker walking through beautiful things, but then we have the adventurer that's out there to take risk. Adventure, responsibility, expectation. But there was a gambler that talked about risk as well. Very interesting. A lot of nuance. Lex Talionis. Okay, the brawler. Oh my God. Okay, let's see what the brawler is about. Um, Lex. Okay, we're going to be hitting the Google a lot here because we have Lex Talionis. So I'm, I don't know, I'll look it up. I'll leave it to you to look up. I will leave you things to discover. How about that? The brawler is lack of empathy and confrontation. The chiromancer delivering news and collaboration. How very, very interesting. The dancer, self-expression, strength. And again, that dynamism, the one hand open, the other one closed. They're just really moving. The herald, small regrets, <gasps> longing. The herald, okay. What would you think if you just heard the word herald? I would think news coming in, um, a declaration, saying something out loud, um, calling your shots, you know, but we have small regrets. And then there's a rabbit and an eye and a moon and snakes and longing. I'm going to go to the book for this one, you guys. I'm actually going to read this one because it's not... This one, there is such a disconnect that I cannot make it sen make sense. Nimble hands pluck at the strings of a hair, of a lute. God, sorry. <laughs> ah, yes, I'm getting old. Nimble hands pluck at the strings of a lute, and fragrant smoke curls from beneath the wide brim of a hat. Where's the hat? Where's the hat? The wide brim of a hat and smoke curling. I don't see any of that. Wow, I'm confused. The herald exudes an easy sort of charm that draws others to them as they play their tune, but beneath that smile and easy laugh, there's an undercurrent of melancholy. They think back to the day that their life changed, to the flowers on the hillsides, the hairs in the grass, the guard waiting in ambush, would their fate have been different had they taken a different path back then, or would it still have turned out the same way? It's easy to get caught up in the what-ifs, but if you go forward holding on to all those little regrets, you're going to miss out on the pleasures of the moment. Be your own herald of change and bring something new and more positive into your life. Don't let the force of your own feelings separate you from finding joy in the path you're on now. Reverse. Spite is a powerful motivator. In a moment when your motivation may be flagging, think of those who doubted you and use the satisfaction of proving them wrong to get you where you need to go. Once you're there, don't forget to release those feelings again. You guys, I see a hair mentioned once. The hair's in the grass. I don't see snakes mentioned at all. 
I don't see anything that they described depicted on this card. I don't see smoke coming from under the brim of a hat. I don't see any of it. Yikes. The Mascareri, hiding your true self and projection. Now that makes sense. Masquerade, mask. The musician, inspiration, gratitude. Now that makes perfect sense too. Thank you for including music. The painter, productivity, creation. I'm really, I'm, I'm, that Herald card is such a stumbling block for me. The puppeteer, explanations, apologies, explanations, apologies. Why would we not get manipulation with the puppeteer? Oh dear, I'm, I'm just, um, I'm struggling y'all. Soft curls of sawdust litter the floor and the, the scent of wood shavings fills the air. Shelves, cupboards, and tabletops are covered with wooden figures some have assembled, not yet fully carved, some not yet fully carved. The puppeteer does not know the fear of being alone. When loneliness calls, they simply create their own company. Explanations, apology. Conjuring real social skills can be a challenge. People have their own feelings in their own lives. It's easy to say or do the wrong thing. You're not the only person to make an embarrassing mistake. I d it doesn't make any sense to me at all. The runaway. Secrets running from problems. So do we ignore the image or do we ignore the words? I say we ignore the words. Because the images are, you know, they do tell a story. And here's the storyteller. Viewpoints, control. The tailor. Attention to detail, pride. I have that very pair of scissors. <laughs> no, not that very pair. One close, sitting right there. Attention to detail and pride, the tailor. That makes sense. The twins, self-protection, dual natures. See, perfect sense. The weaver, rediscovery, transition. The witch, experimentation and rebellion. Look at, there's actually an aura coming off of that. All right, <clears throat> I just took a quick peek and I, the reason that name is familiar to me is because there is another Liminal 11 deck by this author and artist, Fez Inkright, and that is the Seed and Sickle. And I am now recalling that I don't reach for that deck because I found the same disconnect in that deck, which is understandable if you have two different people, author and artist, but when there's a single person, you really expect cohesion. All right, let me light my charcoal and we'll give it a blessing and a test drive and we'll see, you know, everything comes out in the wash, right? If you can, if it gives a great reading, who gives a shit? But like I said, we're, it, I feel like you're being presented with the choice. Do you pay attention to the images? Do you pay attention to the keywords? Do you pay attention to the book? All right, while that is firing up, let's give it a really good smooth blessing. Next, I almost got in trouble there. <laughs> All right, by air and fire, be purified and cleansed. And please, I call upon the element of air to bring clarity to my mind with this deck. Please, oh please. And by salt and water, may you be blessed and made whole. Let me get this over the other side here. And by the sound of the bell. May the spirit inside you awaken. 
guides and guardians, allies and ancestors, I welcome you here. I give you gratitude for all of the work that you're going to do to help me connect with this deck. <laughs> I offer you fresh water, I offer you the fire of Azrael, and I offer the fire of Azrael to this deck too, to awaken the spirit of divination. I'm going to plug up my salt water again so it doesn't evaporate. All right. The acid test. So, you know, it's 60 cards, but it is as thick as most 78 card tarot decks. It does fit easily in the hand, so there's no um, obstacle or no block to shuffling there. But the card's stuck. Here we go. It is possible. It is possible. Okay. They don't want to bridge because when you get the whole deck together, it ain't gonna bend. But if you're if you're doing a riffle shuffle, you can riffle it, and I'm gonna do it again because I uh, I'm gonna do it two more times because I do want that good mix, but then you just got to shove them together. Denied. Oh, one more. Oh, and they don't even want to do that, but you know what? I'm doing it. <laughs> I'm doing it. Think you can get away from me, do ya? And then let's see. Oh, I did manage to get a bridge. You just got to manhandle it. Let's take a look. They didn't stay bent, so that's a good thing. And see, that's a reason that I really do want to do the bridge after I shuffle, because it bends them the other way, you know? They may loosen up in time. But let's go back and look at the spreads here and see what we want to do. All right, what's the sword? That's a relationship thing. The shield. Okay, the shield is the defense that we place in front of us. It's the guardedness of past experiences, the protections we wrap around ourselves. We wrap ourselves in when faced with the unknown. Opening up to a new connection can make you feel vulnerable, but the rewards you may reap from it are worth every moment of weakness. Use this spread to assess your own feelings right now in this moment as you address your social ties. Okay, sword and shield. The city cannot exist, so they put them together there, but then they separate them. All right, that's pretty involved. The citadel is way involved. Um, the troop. <clears throat> the crowd. See, I, 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 I got, Can we just do... Let's just do a three-card and take it, um, I just realized my fingernails are really gross, and I just took a shower. <laughs> if you're new here, know that you will get TMI from me every time. All right, let's just shuffle and ask what it is we need to know right now. Now, they, um, they're kind of weird to handle. They do sort of stick. They don't slide too well. They would benefit from a hit with uh, some fanning powder. Okay, we'll take you. I'm going for three cards here. You. They're hard to put back together because they just don't, they, yeah. Okay. Let's do, no, let's not do too many, too many. See how they go this way. Whoa. Okay, there's number two. <laughs> and... There's, ooh, let's take you and we'll set those aside. All right. Here, I know I'm just going to knock those off. All right, here we go. I love the lines in my tabletop because I can line things up. All righty. Number one, the twins. Number two, the cartographer. Number three, the queen. Now we're leaving this wide open to see if the deck itself can take us in a thread. Um, <clears throat> all right, so that's the troop, that's the academy, and that's the court. So right away, I can go to the troop, I can go to the, um, 
the troop here and look up the twins 144 yes very easy to find the cards in the book a quiet courtyard the soft murmur of a nearby tea shop the call of songbirds and a blazing argument shattering the peace so this is self-protection dual natures the twins were born at the same time, but they couldn't be more different. The first, a dreamer, charming and surrounded by friends, the other more worldly, but dogged by life's injustices and feelings of inadequacy. Each twin feels the pressure to measure up to their sibling, but that pressure is entirely internal. Neither is judging the other, only themselves. This card relates to a specific relationship in your life. You and the other person are bound together, but past traumas are blocking your ability to make this a harmonious relationship. Be kind and take time to reassess your behavior. Are you really being fair to the other person? How are you continuing old habits or resentments? There is kindness in acknowledging that we're all human. Reverse, the relationship isn't with another, but with yourself. What was in balance is now off kilter. Oops. The two sides of you are warring, making it hard to make decisions, or perhaps you're struggling to balance periods of manic productivity with sluggish, sluggish demotivation. It's time to bring your energy back into balance and work out a happy medium. Okay, a specific relationship. So let's just say, you know, since we're doing a collective reading, um, to look at our own lives. Where are we having a relationship where maybe we're not being kind to the person? Uh, maybe, okay, we're bound together, but past traumas are blocking your ability to make this a harmonious relationship. So talking just about if you have, um, and I mean, it gets really specific saying that you can't work things out because of shared trauma or past trauma. So the twins, self-protection, dual natures. I don't really see the self-protection thing described. Fez, I have a problem. All right. So we are called to take a look at our own behavior within whatever relationship in our life um, we're struggling with. <clears throat> Let's go to the next one, Cartographer, Crossroads Exploration. And I'm just looking at keywords here, self-protection, crossroads, determination, dual natures, exploration, sacrifice. Those three, the bottom ones, which I think are the reversed meanings, says that it's time to explore kind of within our own selves, the, du the duality of our own nature, and see maybe what in that duality has caused us problems that needs to go? If I look at the upright meaning, self-protection, a crossroads and determination. Self-protection. So we're at a crossroads with our own self-protection. Um, that the top keywords don't make as much of a storyline as the bottom keywords. All right, let's go to the next one. The Academy. Cartographer. And actually, you know, knowing um, the element that you're in makes it pretty easy to just go pardon me, to that section in the book. All right. Not far from the walls of the citadel, a figure sits on a rocky bluff, surveying the land before them. Rocks weigh down the corners of a vellum sheet and a pen is wet with ink, ready to map the shapes of the mountains. The cartographer doesn't just record the roads, they remember every st step they took to get here even as they look ahead to the excitement of discovering new lands. You currently find, so we do have that description that has nothing to do with the image or very little to do with the image on the card. And then we have uh, the, the meanings. And I'm gonna go back to this one. You see those beautiful cranes? Nowhere, it mentioned songbirds, nowhere did it mention cranes or the sun and moon, or the, you know. You currently find yourself at a crossroads, unsure of which direction to take. Something within you is eager for a new journey, but doubts make you hesitate. Which path will lead you where you want to go, and which will lead you to an unexpected destination or astray? 
When inner conflicts stop you from taking the next step forward, overcome the uncertainty and embody the boldness you need. Reversed is rather than a traditional four-way crossroad, you've been living your life at a crossroad of 10, 20, 100 different roads. <laughs> you pick up and discard new avenues too quickly for any of them to stick, leaving you full of great ideas, but with nothing to show for it. It's time to settle down and focus on just one road or you'll be constantly directionless. Now, how nice would it be if instead of exploration, it said directionless? That would be very clear what the meaning in the book is for the reverse, but we don't get that. Okay, so the, our, our own dual nature. Let's just look at it within ourselves, okay? I mean, you could be struggling with something in a specific relationship and at a crossroads with that, time to make a decision. But let's just look at our own dual nature and see where it has brought us because it's time to make a decision which... Um, which side we want to really nurture and which side maybe needs some therapy. <laughs> Let's look at the queen. Oops. Proud. Okay, the queen. The throne room is an austere affair lined with tapestries and portraits of past rulers. At the far end, the throne commands attention. It represents power and the sacrifices made by those who have sat on it. Occupying it now is the queen, sitting tall and proud, ready for a day full of difficult decisions. But this is a position that they have worked hard to reach and they will not shy away from the responsibilities that have come in the wake of their ambition. Okay, position they've worked hard to reach, sitting tall and proud. Okay, but a queen doesn't work hard to get to the throne. They marry somebody. Or they get born into it. You've left a lot of things behind in order to get where you are now, but regretting your decisions will only tarnish the glory of what you've achieved. There will be more of these challenges in the future. Come to terms with the fact that achieving your goals is worth all of them. Determination. So, achieving your goals is worth all of the things that you regret. I'm getting wiggly and grumpy. Okay, reverse. The queen indicates situations where sacrifice has been made, but nothing has been gained in return. No matter how much time, focus, or energy you've put into a task, nothing has turned out as you intended. You may need to reassess your approach or accept the fact that sometimes there is no equivalent exchange. And you know what? I'm the weaver. Crossroads. Founder, Foundations, Community, Determination, Sacrifice, okay, Self-Protection, our dual natures take us to a crossroads and we need to decide. You know, the, one of the things that this can talk about is it can really help you if you're having trouble making a decision about something. Um, to project yourself forward in time and then look back at the thing you are most proud of that you did. It can also be extremely informative to think about that, you know, project yourself to the goal and look back and see what you regret. That is some time travel that you can do that's really going to help you clean out <laughs> some of your process. Okay. The Weaver and the Founder, Rediscovery, Transition, Foundations, Community. So transitioning, I'm, I, I have to look and see how, oh, I turned right to it. Okay, the Weaver. A shuttle clicks and clatters back and forth. Hey, a loom moves under a skillful pair of hands. Looky, it's describing the picture. The Weaver takes the threads of fate and turns them into something whole and beautiful, new patterns and stories emerging. On and on. The threads of your life are long and entirely unique to you. It's time to turn them into something complete. Take the messy loose ends that you don't know what to do with and make them part of you too. In doing so, you may discover a part of yourself that you didn't recognize before or rediscover a forgotten thing or person who brought, brought you pleasure. I don't understand why 
that we're talking about weaving things together and we get discovery and finding something new rather than weaving according to a plan. Okay, whatever. Rediscovery. Transition. There's a loose end somewhere and needs tying off. Okay, so tying up loose ends. I guess I can bridge that gap somewhat. And then we have the founder also in this category. Um, oh, that's, sorry, that's the court. To build a community, foundations must first be laid. What sort of a person must you be to best support those around you? So this makes sense. Founder, foundations, so much sense. So we're talking about here going back in possibly because of our own dual nature and decisions that need to be made. Um, we're rediscovering parts of ourselves and kind of transitioning into a new phase. Maybe we are uh, beefing up a part of ourselves that we just really haven't nurtured before. And when we rediscover, we can lay new foundations with these characteristics. Then we have the merchant, self-worth, trade. Okay, let's do that. So self-worth. We start off at a crossroads and we explore our dual nature. We rediscover some loose ends that maybe were left straggling that we need to weave back into the tapestry of our life. Um, we employ our determination to lay new foundations based on our rediscovery of ourselves. And this results in an increase in self-worth. That's an earth card. so. Absolutely, it results in a foundation. I can read with this deck. I can't read with this deck in the book. So I think, you know, it's going to be one of those decks where the first time I use it, I, I read from the book or if I get stuck. But I think I'm just going to go with it. And like I said, with the seed and sickle, the reason I don't reach for that deck is because um, I don't think there are any keywords in that deck. And so I have to look up each one each time. It's got the plant, but I don't know what that plant is. And so until you internalize all that, you've got to look everything up. This, I'm happy to say, makes it easy to set the book aside because the book just confuses me and makes me feel a disconnect. I love, okay, let's, let's talk about positives <laughs> and let's stop the bumping of the camera. Let's do this. Okay, so summary. <laughs> summary. I'd love to know what you guys think. If you have this deck, what you think of it. I, I love uh, the images. I love the gilding and the coloring. There certainly is a lot in each image that you can draw on. I appreciate the keywords. Um, I love the box. I love all the Liminal 11 boxes. Cardstock, not so much, but it's workable and I feel like it'll loosen up over time. The biggest negative to this deck is just that the writing seems to be incredibly disconnected, which is such an odd thing when the author is also the artist. Still happy to have it in the collection. Let me know what you think. Um, if you get things that are incredibly valuable from my unboxings and readings, please hit one of the links down below. Buy me a cup of coffee, buy me a new deck, <laughs> send me some money, pick one off that Amazon wish list so I can read for you. And when you do, I, on your little note, you can put your name or not. You can say, I don't want you to use my name. You can say, I have a question. I don't have a question. Whatever. I will read for you, which is the only way you can get a personal reading from me other than be a member of my family. <laughs> the only way you can get a personal reading from me is to buy me a deck. Come on. It's simple and so much cheaper than it would have cost you before I retired. <laughs> anyway, I will stop quacking now. Thanks for hanging out with me for this long, long review. I will see you next time on an unboxing or a live stream. Till then, thanks for hanging out. This is Luna. Blessed be.